the Lord. Give God a hand. Praise for the choir. Man, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man, you're going to have me this week. Jesus be the rock. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank God for the choir. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the worship. And we praise the Lord for our worship leader, Reverend Shaga Dutch Malik. Thank God again for the ministry of staff and everyone who participated in the services today. And as we come, as we highlighted all of the events that's happening in this month, we pray and hope that you will be blessed by them all. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, in your name, we come now to give thanks unto you, asking you to please bless us like only you can. Continue to touch, bless, heal, deliver, work your miracles. God, we believe in your miracles and your power. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen. For those who are visiting with us, the Lord laid upon my heart some months ago to come down on the flow and to get close to the people and to try to do some teaching. And so as we come this moment, we ask that you please pray much with us that God's purpose will be attained. The Lord dropped in my spirit and said, just keep teaching, keep teaching my word. It will not return unto me void. A lot of times you don't see the results that you want to see even in your personal life as you read the word of God. But just remember one thing, that if you keep eating, you will survive. You don't always remember all the food that you eat, but you knew that you ate something to keep you throughout the day. And you know how hungry you would be if you missed a meal. You know how hungry and how, what it would do to your body if you stopped eating. And that's why it is so important to let the word of God dwell in you. Brother George Wood, I didn't see you, brother. I'm so glad to see you. Thank God for your presence. Amen. Amen. This brother had been in the hospital. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. Is Pat here? Okay. All right. God bless you. Now, our scripture today is taken from the book of Exodus. Uh, the scripture that was just read in your hearing, and it's very short, so I'm going to read it again. Thank you, Brother Rodney, for reading it. And it says um, in the Exodus, the 12th chapter, 21 through 23 and it says then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them go and select lambs for yourselves according to your claims and kill the Passover lamb take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lintel and the two dough posts with the blood that is in the basin none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your house to strike you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All kind of titles I wanted to give this message today, but I'm simply going to talk about the Passover lamb. The Passover lamb. Amen. The Passover lamb. I don't know about you, but in my daily reading, I thank the Lord for what God does because um, I just get excited about the word of God, uh, reading it every day, uh, just seeing how the word of God moves and what he says to us and how it is a lamp unto our feet, it's a light unto our pathways and to digest that word. Uh, the psalmist says, I will hide the word of God in my heart so that I will not sin against you. A uh, best way to know how you really do need the word is that when you mess up and you don't feel bad. When you can keep on sinning and you know you're sinning and you don't have no conscience about it. That's when you know you need more of the word because the word of God acts as a lead and a guide. It checks your conscience. It will chastise you when you do stuff that you know you should not be doing. It doesn't say that we will be perfect. It says that when we fall, we can always get forgiveness and get up. We do not use that as an excuse to keep on doing, but we know that we have an advocate who was tempted just like we were or are, yet without sin, so therefore he knows our weaknesses and our infirmities. He knows our imperfection. One of the biggest things that we always try to, in counseling, try to get people to overcome shame and to overcome, uh, to forgive themselves. 
and overcome guilt because those are the tools that the enemy wants to use to hold you down and make you think you are no good and you can never be any better than what you are. And the enemy want to convince you that you are too old to change, you are too mean to live, and yet you can't die, and you don't deserve heaven, and yet you're living in hell. But he wants you to know that he come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants us to have abundant living. And you got to learn how to decree that in your life every day. You got to learn how to tell yourself every day, I am the head and not the tail, that God means me good. He means my family good. He means me well because he died on a cross that I might have the right to the tree of life. And if he died as if I were the only person on earth, how much will he do for me when I, I reach and reach out to him? That's why the scripture says he who abides in the word abides in Christ. And if you abide in Christ, you shall ask whatever you want and he will do it for you. I'm tired of people complaining and talking about what they are and what they don't have, but will not embrace what God wants to give us because he wants to give us the whole world. He loves everybody. I dare anybody to walk around and throw a pity party and talk about how bad off you are when God has given you his blood to forgive you and to lift you up. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God is in the blessing bender. If there's anything I want you to remember from this old old man now is that, is that God means you good. He means you well. And that he will provide if you got the power and the faith to embrace him. Now don't make me get happy because with God all things are possible. If you have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain and tell the mountain to remove. Without faith it is impossible to please him. And we who believe must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Thank you Holy Ghost. The Passover lamb. I love the story of the Exodus. I love reading that story. I just love reading the ten plagues, and I love how God dealt with Moses. You know I love Moses. Moses told God three times, Lord, I have a clumsy tongue. I can't talk like I need to know. But the Lord said, you go, boy. I, I'm with you. I'll stand by your side. I, I'll, I'll be with you. I, when, when they question you, just tell them, I am sent you. Hallelujah. And I thank God it's the present tense. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that Moses was obedient, even though God told him, now this is what I like, is that God told Moses, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Tell him. And Moses was already nervous and shaking and making excuses. Even got to the point that God said, I'm mad at you now. I'm tired of you making excuses. Go. Okay, Lord, but I can't do this. I can't talk. I, I, okay, I'm going to send Aaron. Who's going to? I'm going to speak through you to tell Aaron what to say. Ain't that so? God can still use you, ain't he? Hallelujah. Isn't he a wonderful God? And he doesn't care about your excuses if he wants to use you, if you make yourself. He doesn't care about your capabilities. He wants to know your availability. Are you willing? Praise the Lord. Are you willing? That's all God wants. Are you willing to be used? Are you willing to be transformed? Are you willing to just allow God to have his way in your life? All he wants to know, if you are willing, that's all. I don't call people who are able. I call people who are willing. And if they are willing, I'll do the perfecting. I know you nothing. I know where you came from, but that's why I came to you, because I need something that's empty so I can fill it with my power. I don't need nobody walking around puffed up talking about who they are and what they are and where they came from and how gifted they are and all of this. He said, I want people who will humble themselves because he who humbles himself, I will gladly exalt. I will take them to the level because I know when I take people who consider themselves to be down and I lift them up, they know how to give me glory. They know how to praise me. They, they ain't going to walk around talking about what I did. They're going to talk about, Lord, I thank you for what you did. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I can't let a day go by without giving God the glory. Amen. I can't let a day go by because when I look back and think about all he has done for me, I got to praise him. Praise the Lord. So, 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 so here, after he told Moses, I had all of these excuses, then he turned around each time I'm a heart in Pharaoh's heart. 
I'm a heart in his heart. I'm a heart in his heart. Because, see, I want Pharaoh and I want all of Egypt to know that you all have a God like nobody else. I want them to see that they have a, that you have a God like nobody else. Show off, God. <laughs> Go ahead and show off because that's what I want. Lord, I want you to take me to some doors that nobody, no man can open and no man can close. Because you know, when God take you through a door that no man can open or close, amen, they be looking at it and wondering how you got where you got. And all you got to do is God, but God, nobody but God. I got to give God all the honor. I got to give him the glory. I got to praise him because nobody could have done what has been done except God. So Moses, I'm going to take you through some situations. I know you get hard, hard. I know you get so frustrated. I know you're tired. I know you're tired of praying for your children and they're acting crazy. I know you're tired of praying for that spouse. And the harder you pray, the more he or she act up. <laughs> I know you're tired of having more bills than money. I know you're trying. I saw you paying your tithes. I know you're praying. You're worn your knees out. You have laid on your face. You got your war room. You even cleaned your closet out after you saw the movie and you got your little war room and everything. I see all of that. I see your patience. I know you're asking God, how long more, Lord? How long more do I have to put up with this, Lord? How long more do I have to hang in here? And God is saying, one, try one more time. Try one more time. But can you imagine when it gets down to trying 10 times? Good Lord. It takes faith to hang in here with God. It takes faith to keep on keeping faith. Amen. I told somebody last week, if God would have told me it would take me 10 years to be a bishop, I would have told him, Lord, I'm going to be disobedient this time. But God has a way of doing things and improving us and helping us because when I look back over the things that God doing in my life, ain't no way I would have been ready to do what I need to do. But then again, there are so many wonderful things that has happened in my life over the 10 years until I have no complaints. Amen. The number of people I have met, the number of places I've gone, the number of sustaining hours that he has given me, the number of miracles, good God, and I don't think that I'm vain, but I declare most folks be looking for me to have bags under my eyes. Hallelujah. And all of them telling me, oh, see, Ray, you look good. Oh, you. I mean, I, I'm not being vain and I'm not being bragging, you know. Amen. Amen. But, but <laughs> I went to a meeting Friday that I hadn't been to in a long time. And, you know, it feels good. Everybody, oh, man, look at you. Everybody, man, look at you. Good gracious. I say, talk. Keep on talking. <laughs> Because it ain't nobody but God. Ain't nobody but God. 21 years ago, I couldn't walk a block. Just came out of intensive care. Had no direction in my life. Placed me in an ambulance. On my way from my house to Southern Maryland Hospital. I told the Lord, this is it. I'm giving up ministry. I'm going to find another career. I'm going to do something that won't be ministry. If I get to this hospital and there's another heart attack, I am throwing in the towel. I'll never forget that. In the ambulance, got to the hospital, and about two hours later after diagnosis and tests, oh, you got gastritis. <laughs> had eaten something I had no business eating. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I think it was some pig feet. Amen. No, but anyway. No, I don't know what it was. But, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you go through stuff. And so you wonder why he praised the Lord so much. Huh? You wonder why I can't sit down. You wonder why I can't stop. Why I keep hanging in here. Because there's too many people looking at me who needs encouragement. Hallelujah. I'm hoping that what I'm going through, that when you are going through something, you can say, but I'm not giving up because my pastor endured. And that's why I love encouraging people. Lord, I love encouraging people. Lord, I just love helping folks sometimes to my own detriment. But I love helping folks. 
I love seeing people get up on their feet. I just love seeing, seeing people walk with their backs up and their heads high and dressing nice and looking nice and doing all of those. That just gives me joy. I love to see weak people come down that aisle and come and kneel at the altar and accept Jesus Christ and then come back two and three years later and looking like some of you all looking. Hallelujah. I love to see people when they've been through the mock and the mire and to see what God can do because it encourages me too. I love to see God put marriages back together and heal children and do things to help people prosper. I love to see people start businesses and empower themselves and to see people walking with dignity and providing for their family. Isn't that what we God all called us to do? That we ought to be witnesses in the power? I love to hear that somebody who was hungry is fed and then he said that you visit those who are in prison close those who are naked and they do the things to encourage those who are down and somebody asked the question when did we do it to you God you did it to when you did it unto the least of these you did it unto me and don't you ever think that doing your part to help somebody and to follow the will of God that your work is ever in vain because there is a God who is keeping the record there's a God who is looking low and there's a God who gave you and there's a God who sees what you do with what you have amen so praise the Lord so it exits the story after all of this. Okay, Moses, I've taken you through changes. But now on this 10th play, on this 10th play, I want you to call the elders of the church together and I want you to tell each of them to find a lamb, a lamb without blemish, a lamb that's good, a lamb that's decent. Don't come bringing me no leftovers and don't come bringing me nothing that you don't want. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't come bringing me something that you didn't give no thought to. That's what happened with Cain and Abel. Now, Abel gave a decent offering, but Cain just came and just grabbed something and threw it toward me. But when you come, give some thought to what you are bringing before me because I am holy and I don't play with mess. I don't want your leftovers. I want your heart. I want what you're going to give me. I want it to come from the heart. That's why God says I love a cheerful giver. If you got the mama and you got to complain about what you give and all of this kind of stuff and then to go dig it up and trying to find out where it's going and all of this kind of stuff and one know about what's happening and all of this kind of stuff I can't stand for somebody to give me something and then throw up in my face about what they did hallelujah and want to hold your hostage amen amen when the next week that I'm gonna talk about that wives want to hold husband's hostage Husbands want to hold wives hostage. Y'all better be here next week. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, somebody going to stay away now. Amen. <laughs> okay, now how did I get over there? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Amen. How did I get over there? That's next week. Okay. But, um, oh, okay. Now, come on back. Rain it back in. Rain it back in. Okay. So, now. So, okay, go get a lamb, get one without blemish, all right? I want a good gift. I want whatever you're going to do, I want you to be serious about it. I want you to think about what you are going to sacrifice unto me. And so they got the lamb, and he said, now take the blood and put it over the lintel. And I looked that word up, lintel, and the door post. I said, what is the lintel? It's the wall that's over the door that's holding up the roof, amen? So, so not only, can y'all mind if I try to demonstrate not only do you need, <laughs> Lord, please let me be able to reach it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, this is the lantern. Take that oil. All right. All right. <laughs> and then put it on the doorpost. Woo. Woo. Take that blood. All right. So now I'm going to make a, I'm coming through tonight. I'm coming through. I'm coming through, and I'm going to make a distinction. I'm going to make a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Hallelujah. In other words, God said, in these tough times, you are the ones who are going to survive. The people who have been blood washed, hallelujah. And you know some of you have been surviving, haven't you? Some 
your workers looking at you, your co-workers looking at you, how you keep doing what you're doing? How you, how, you know, yeah, that's what they're saying. See, right, how long have you been doing this? Ten years. How, man, how you doing this? How you, he want to make a distinction. I ain't saying I'm all of that, but I am in Christ. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, he wants to make a distinction. Hey, 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 look, those who are mine, I'm going to prove to those who are not mine because what I want them to do is to look at you and see how you are doing and in hopes that they will get inspired and say there is no secret what God can do. What he has done for others, he'll do for me. And so you have been to hell and back, but you don't look like you've been through what you've been through. Hallelujah, you still got a glow. You should have gone under. You should have been over there in St. E, swinging in the swing, blowing bubbles. Uh-huh. I used to work at a mental hospital. You know, when you're out of your mind, you do some crazy thing. Amen. You be out there bedding. I can swing higher than you can. <laughs> Growing men and women. I'm, you know, because they have lost their mind. And that's why I want to find out a mind is a terrible thing to lose. But how many know life can send you some challenges that some days if you didn't have Jesus or scripture to hang on to? you would lose your mind. I declare, I'm telling you, the Lord can take you, will allow you to go through some stuff that will make you lose your natural mind and wonder, will you ever be happy again? But I'm telling you, when you got Lord God on your side and you got that word high down, what you think that gave me joy this morning? When I woke up four o'clock this morning, couldn't go back to sleep, the Lord said, be not dismayed, whatever be tired, I'm taking care of you. Learn to trust me, boy, because I'll never fail you. Y'all have seen some tough time. I've seen some evil time, but I made a distinction with you. I have been good to you. I bought you through some things. You've had enemies who have portrayed you and you've had people who you've loved stab you in your back and you've had people to walk away who you thought you could trust. You've had people who you brought to your house and lifted up and encouraged and they turn around and talked about you like a dog. But I have not allowed you to go under, but I've kept you. And you know what? I have even taken the bitterness out of your heart. And rather than being a hater, when you see the folks who have done you wrong, you walk up to them and say, hey, how you doing? I am so glad to see you. And they ask you how I'm doing. I said, I'm doing fine. That's what God will do for you. He didn't want you to walk around bitter because of your circumstances. Everybody have troubles. Everybody have ups and downs. Everybody has been betrayed. Everybody has had somebody to do them wrong. But that doesn't give you the right to be nasty and mean because they are. You better learn how to put that stuff aside and say, God, give me the joy because the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. So he said, take the blood, take the blood, put it on your doorposts. And I'm almost finished. Take the blood, put it on your doorposts. Just like I did today. Don't be, you know, we're going to give some all, new all out on uh, family day. I mean, let's take a little dab. But you tell the Lord in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood. And even if you don't have the oil, it's your faith. Every day, plead your, the blood of Jesus. Because God, I need you as the death angels circling and as diseases and demons circling the universe and as they are trying to take our children out every day, God. That's why it's important to call your children's name, call your spouse's name, call your grandkids' name, call everybody out. You know on the prayer line, I get them all, don't I? I get the in-laws and the outlaws. I get all of the folks who need prayer because anybody connected. And what is another prayer I pray? Lord, bless everybody that's connected with everybody on the line because we all need prayer power. We need to know that you are God. Lord, please pull down strongholds. And Lord, let us realize that our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty for the pulling down the strongholds. Your power is prayer. I preached last week about the tools for war. I'm telling you, you got, can't play around with this thing. You can't pat 
Satan on the head and talk about, oh, you, you cute, but, and, and turn around. You better walk through your house and tell him in the name of Jesus, you got to get up out of here. Hallelujah. And if you can't pray it, you better put some music on. You better put some music on that's going to remind you of God's goodness. You better pipe some gospel music up in your bedroom and turn some of that other mess off about shaking it and all that kind of stuff and get, uh -huh, and get you some music flowing in that house. You, uh -huh, you better turn that, that, that television off. And, and you better put on some music and you better get you some quiet time and you better get in the bathroom and make your bathroom a cathedral. You better get in a little corner in the wall and get on your knees and spend some time with the Lord. Get off that telephone to complaining and telling everybody about your bender. They can't do nothing about your bender except I read other day most of the people you tell your benders to, glad to hear it. Uh huh. I know. I know he wasn't who he said was. Uh huh. I know he wasn't that holy. Uh huh. They glad to hear you down. Uh huh. And then the other ones can't do nothing about it. No way. Amen. They just sympathize with you. Oh, child, you so pitiful. I sure feel sorry. My heart goes out to you. But there ain't nothing I can do to help you. Amen. Some of them don't even say I'll pray for you. But see, you know what you need to do. When folks come, oh, I know I said I'm finished. I know, I know, y'all. All right. Hallelujah. I just feel good. I need to give you some more information. Amen. Y'all just bear with me for a moment. But, um, but the blood, the blood, applied that blood. And then when the death angel came through, guess what? And now Moses, he told Moses, that every time the death angel sees the blood, he's going to pass over your house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then because they were covered by the blood. So, I got to speed it up. So then Jesus went to Jerusalem for the celebration of the Passover. Because Moses said, don't ever forget what I did for you. I made a distinction between you and the Egyptian, Egyptians, and everybody in Egypt lost a loved one, the firstborn, but in Israel, not even a dog was barking. <laughs> Not even, I made such a distinction that nobody in Israel lost nothing. Hallelujah. In 2008, some of y'all was all upset, but the tithers kept their homes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you ever wondered why the co-worker got fired, but they kept you on? Or uh, you have ever wondered why God allowed you to lose the job, but then turn around and give you something better. Hallelujah. Anybody here? All right. So that, that's all God saying. I'm just making a distinction because, see, I got a reputation to hold up with people who trust me. He said, those who put their trust in me shall never be disappointed. And so why are they laughing at you and talking about why this happened to you? You must be ain't doing what you need to do. Then you come out on the next side, and the next year you come back and tell them what you're going through. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. They thought you were going under, but the Lord turned around and elevated you to a point that you are now better off than what you were before. So Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, became the sacrifice, and he shedded his blood. Thank God for Jesus shedding his blood. And now because of his blood, we can sing songs like there's power in the blood. Because it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the those valley. And I just love this part. It will never lose its power. Hallelujah. And so therefore, because he is now the perfect lamb of God, we don't have to slay no more lambs. Hallelujah. We don't have to kill nothing else because Jesus' blood is sufficient for us all. And I thank God this morning that when you apply the blood, hallelujah, Apply the blood. Apply the blood of everything. I just apply the blood. Apply the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I just pleaded on everything. My family, my finances, everything. I pleaded on my health. I pleaded. I pleaded. I pleaded. I pleaded over Union Bethel Church. I pleaded. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I pleaded over my marriage. I pleaded over my children. I pleaded over my grandchild. I pleaded that whatever I'm going through, Lord, if I'm going through trials, I just plead the blood of Jesus because I know there's power in the blood. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. 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 There is nothing like having a relationship with Jesus. I don't care what you're doing. If Jesus is not the head of your life, you're missing a great part of living. And today we want to ask you, anybody want Jesus, come quickly. Hallelujah. Anybody want Jesus, come quickly. Hallelujah. Come, come, come. If you want Christ in your life, come on right now. Hallelujah. If you want to make a recommitment saying, Lord, I need to get reconnected. I really need you in my life. I need you. I don't need to be playing around. I don't need to be fooling around. I need you, God. I need more power. Come to the altar. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. I need more power. I need you. I need more inspiration. I really do need to improve my life. Anybody want to improve your life today by coming to the altar? Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Brother George Wood, at the altar. Hallelujah. Come on, anybody else? Hallelujah. Anybody else want to come? Our doors are open. Now, anybody want to become a member of Union Bethel Church? All right. Anybody else want to come? Quickly. 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 Hallelujah. Quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody want to come? Come on. If you're already messed up, you sure don't have nothing to lose. And you got everything to gain. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. All right. He will. Oh, thank y'all. Y'all playing it. I mean, singing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will. Somebody want to come? Quick, quick, quick. All right. Anybody else? Anybody? I'm making the last call. Making the last call. We got to do our Holy Communion. Anybody else want to come? Quick. All right, thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Take care of me. Yes, he will. Thank you, Jesus. Every day. Through every day. Oh, 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 okay. Hallelujah. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. God. Lord, I'm so glad he does. Lord, we've been through so much. I'm so glad to be a witness. Take care of you. Lord, I'm so glad. You've provided, you've protected, you've cared for. You've opened doors. Thank you. Thank you, sweet. Thank you. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our sister is coming today to become a member of Union Bethel Church. Come on, sisters. I'm just hearing Sister Ford just telling me miracle after miracle. She ain't here for no pity. She is here to tell God thank you for several things that he has done for her. Good God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep on doing what you're doing, sister. You faithful to the prayer line. Amen. All right. All right. Thank you. Ain't nothing wrong with getting tied up in a circle of prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, praise the Lord. Show some sisterly love. Patricia Hawkins. Show some sisterly love. Now, Sister Pickett, are you a class leader? You're not? You used to be, didn't you? But you know her. be her class leader. All right. Thank you. Now, Sister Jackie Brown, I mean, uh, Sister, uh, Sister Patricia Hawking, you coming today? All right. Now, you saw all those sisters who just surrounded you. They want to show you sisterly love. And they want you to come in here and just be what God wants you to be. Amen? All right. Now, I all right, get ready to you want to go. They just happen to sit together. They don't know each other, but they just happen to sit together. You don't know why God stationed you to sit by somebody. But Sister Pickett has adopted her grandkids. Ain't that something? Sister Pickett probably got 150 grandchildren and adopted children. And the thing that gives me should know them all by name. All right, praise the Lord. All right, all right. Oh, I thought y'all were singing, he will take care of you. <laughs> all right, okay. Y'all went to step, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank y'all so much. God bless you. Thank you. All right, praise the Lord. All right, all right. I know we're running a little behind schedule. All right, but it's for a good reason. Amen, amen. amen. Your chicken wings will not burn. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Even if they burn, you just tell the Lord, Lord, let me get to the store and get some more. Amen. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, now, it's Thanksgiving time. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. So let's act like we cheerful. Amen. At least some of y'all cheerful. <laughs> all right. Okay, now let's all bow, lift up our tithes and our offering. 
remember you can pay by debit card or uh, check, cash, whatever, envelopes in your pews. All right, thank you. Let me lift up my debit card. I got to pay by that today. Amen. All right, Father God, in Jesus' name, we're so grateful to have something to give. Lord Jesus, even in the midst of the ice and the snow, you provided. We thank you, God, for people being faithful to this church. Many people doubled up last week. Many people making sure that your kingdom be advanced. And we're just so grateful for everything you do. And God, I pray that nobody who put their trust in you will ever fail, but will always have more than enough. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, let's stand. Let's come. Let's stand on both sides. Let's come to the altar. The football donation thing is going to be as you go out the door.